Hey everybody, today I'm celebrating two years since the release of this book, Becoming Heather, which I dedicated to my mom. Um, so in honor of that, I'm going to read you the first chapter. Chapter 1, Summer 1998. Miss Saylor, the words were spoken without the slightest accent. Laura had no choice but to look at the man who was walking toward her. Alone in a foreign country, her first reaction was fear, but she forced herself to answer calmly, yes. With a pounding heart, she studied the man before her and was surprised to discover that he was not Hispanic as she had first thought. His hair was black and his skin was tanned, but his ancestry was clearly not Mexican. Relief flooded her. Oh, she said, you're American. Did Mr. Scarlet send you? The man nodded and she turned to grab her bags. Allow me, he insisted, and she was glad for the help. She had never learned to pack lightly. As they walked out of the airport and into the parking lot, neither spoke. Laura did not know what to say, and it seemed the strong man carrying her bags was not about to make small talk or even introduce himself. During the long walk, he did manage to make an apology for the distance and a remark about bad parking, but that was all, even after they reached his beat-up pickup truck and began the drive to the marina. Sitting in the silent cab, Laura thought about the letter that had brought her far from home. It had been written by a man named Richard Scarlett and contained an invitation to visit his home to try out for a position as his nanny. The opportunity had arisen from Laura's friendship with Mr. Scarlett's niece, Hannah, whom Laura had met at college. Laura had moved home for the summer, badly in need of money for school in the fall, and had been reaching, reaching searching for work when Hannah offered to write her uncle about a possible job. His reply had come more quickly than Laura had expected. Mr. Scarlett was desperate. He had offered to hire her for the summer if she showed she could handle the job. It had not taken her long to decide to give it a try. Everything she had been told about Mr. Scarlett's home made it sound like a paradise. He was the owner of an island located in the Pacific Ocean several miles off the coast of Mexico. A private yacht was used for travel to and from the island where he lived with the 13 children who would become Laura's responsibility. So far, Laura was having trouble finding any downside to this scenario. As the truck sped down the highway, it was Laura who broke the silence. How did you pick me out of the crowd? She asked. The man beside her shrugged and replied, you were the only 19 year old American girl in sight. Good point, she admitted with a smile. The silence returned until her next question. How far is it to where we board the boat? Just a few miles. He did not bother to look at her as he answered. Do you live on the island? She queried in another attempt at conversation. But he only nodded. He tried again. She tried again. How long have you lived there? As long as anyone. I was the first person Rick brought. She was encouraged. Do you like it there? He shrugged. You'll know the answer to that question when you see the place. Only someone who's never been there would ask that. She smiled, and excitement filled her once again. I can't wait! It must be wonderful! What's the house like? He sighed and glanced over at her. I realize you're curious, but I think you'd best just wait. I wouldn't want to spoil anything for you by trying to describe it. You can save your questions for Rick. I'm sure he'll jump at the chance to tell you all about it. Laura nodded and leaned back against her seat. Okay, but would you mind telling me your name? I'm afraid you haven't done that. He smiled then, and looked over at her again. A chuckle escaped his lips and grew into a laugh. Sorry about that. It hadn't occurred to me that you didn't know it. It's Edward. Not Ed or Eddie. Just Edward. It's nice to meet you, Edward, she said with a bright smile. You can call me Laura. All right, then. I hope we'll be good friends if I decide to stay. He only nodded. Both were silent for the remainder of the trip. The old pickup pulled up next to the dock. Edward got out and grabbed Laura's bags. Laura followed him, curious as to which boat was Mr. Scarlet's yacht. Edward approached a small motorboat. Laura eyed it in confusion. It did not look much like the boat she had been imagining. Hello, I'm Rick. You must be Miss Sailor. Laura pulled her eyes off the boat and found that her new employer stood before her. His face was friendly as he reached out to shake her hand. His grip was firm and his manners likable. He was a tall man with broad shoulders. His hair was dark except for the slightest bit of gray on either side of his face. Overall, he looked much younger and more handsome than Laura had expected. Call me Laura, please, she insisted with a smile. Laura it is, then. Welcome to Mexico. This here is the pedal, he explained, 
gesturing toward the motorboat. She's going to take us out to the Scarlet Rose. Oh, then there is a bigger boat? Yes, nodded Rick. This is just one of the Rose's tenders. Tenders? Boats we use to bring people or supplies on board. Ah, that makes sense. Having placed Laura's bags on the petal, Edward returned. Rick, he said in a serious tone, can I talk with you alone? Rick excused himself, and Laura looked, turned to look out at the ocean. It was the first time she had seen the Pacific. Before her, the blue water stretched out to the horizon. She gazed out at the rolling waves and wondered for the hundredth time what the island would be like. It was only a few minutes before Rick joined her and interrupted her daydream. Beautiful, isn't it? He commented. She nodded. I was just wondering about the island and your children. Ah, two of my favorite topics. Why don't, but why don't we wait until we're, we board the Rose? We'll have plenty of time to talk there. Edward's going to catch a plane and spend the week in California, so it's just you and me. Are you ready to go? Laura nodded. Yes, sir. Rick started the engine and maneuvered the boat out of the marina and into the ocean. In the distance, Laura could see the ship they were headed for. It looked more like what she had imagined, and her excitement surged to new heights as they neared the large, white motor yacht before them. When they came to the back of the yacht, Laura saw two middle-aged Hispanic men waiting to help them aboard. Rick introduced her. Laura. Meet Jose and Gabriel, part of my crew. Boys, this is Laura Sailor. Hello, Laura greeted them, and they nodded in return, wearing such boyish grins that Laura liked them at once. Above the pedal, two beams protruded from the yacht. From the end of each dangled a strap with a hook. Rick busied himself attaching these to the pedal. Laura watched with curiosity. Okay, Jose, called Rick, and then to Laura's amazement, the pedal was raised out of the water and the beam slid back into the yacht bringing them on board, boat and all. That's cool, she exclaimed. It is handy, isn't it, agreed Rick. Now, shall we have a look around? That would be amazing, I've never been on a yacht before. Well, I may be biased since I built it, but in my opinion, this is one of the best around. Laura stared at him. You built it? Yes, that's what I do. I'm co-owner of Scarlet Brothers, Inc. We build all sorts of boats. Wow, I'm impressed, I can't wait to see the rest of the ship. Then let's go. She followed him inside, and he showed her around the boat's extravagant staterooms and living areas. It's like a floating palace, she declared. Rick laughed. It is rather like that, isn't it? All that's left to see now is the sun deck. Let's go up there to sit and talk. They climbed a staircase and walked out on top of the vessel, where they found several chairs arranged around a low table. A large umbrella rose over their heads and shaded the table and chairs. Laura took a seat and stared out at the ocean. It's peaceful up here, she remarked. Yes, it's one of my favorite places. They sat in silence for a moment before Rick asked, Can I get you something to drink? I believe there's some lemonade in here. He reached into what Laura had assumed was an end table, but was actually a small refrigerator, and pulled out a bottle. That would be lovely. He poured them each a glass before asking, Now, what do you want to hear about? Tell me about the children. How many boys and how many girls? Five boys and eight girls. What are their names? The oldest is Brian, then there's Ellie, Lily, Katie. Here, I'll write it down for you, Rick offered. That way you'll have something to refer to. Laura watched as he opened a drawer and pulled out a pad of paper. He took a pen from his shirt pocket and began to write. When he finished, he tore the top sheet of paper from the pad and handed it to her. It read, Jonathan Brian, 16. Elvira Daisy, Ellie, just turned 16. Priscilla Lily, 14. Katrina Lavender, Katie, just turned 14. Reuben Henry, 12. Peter Todd, 11. Alice Violet, 10. Isaac Sylvester, 7. Samantha Marigold, Mary, 6. Florence Dahlia, 5. Timothy Charles, 3. Constance Rose, 2. Olivia Iris, 2. I gave you their full names and underlined or added the names they go by, Rick explained. I also added their ages. I thought that might be helpful. You may notice that all of the boys' first names are Bible names. The girls' middle names are all flowers. This will be very helpful. Thank you, said Laura, as she finished reading the list. You're welcome, though I suppose it's not really a complete list. You'll still have all the other staff members' names to learn. How many staff members do you have? Let's see, there are six crew members on the Scarlet Rose. They live on the, the yacht, though, so you won't see much of them. The other staff members work in and around the house. Josh is our muscle man. He works on the yard, but also helps in the house when needed. Margaret is the cook, and Nora does the cleaning. 
I let the two of them believe they work for me, but they're really more like aunts than employees. The three of them live on the island, and we have two young women who come on the weekend to help with the cleaning. And then there's Edward, added Laura. He said he's been on the island longer than anyone. Is he like your right-hand man? Rick laughed. You could say that. We've always done everything together. It's a pleasure having him involved on the island. Laura looked out across the water and inquired, What do you expect my job to include? Excellent question. I have been trying to hire a nanny ever since my wife's death. Did Hannah tell you about my wife? She mentioned that you were widowed, but that's all I know. Rick frowned, and the weariness Laura had noticed before washed over his expression. She died two years ago, he said. It was cancer. It's been hard on all of us, especially Ellie. She's become a handful these last couple of years. She'll be the one to give you the most trouble, but I'll do my best to help you out. I appreciate that, Laura said quietly. And I'm sorry about your wife. That's got to be tough. He grew solemn and nodded. Yes, it is. Her name was Rose, and I was crazy about her. It's been a bit chaotic around the island since she died. I've hoped that a nanny could restore at least a bit of order, but it's po possible I'm just dreaming. I want you to be peacekeeper, mentor, and friend to the kids. Your role will be a bit like a big sister. I spend a lot of time away from the island, and someone has to stay with the kids while I'm gone. Edward is away nearly as much as I am, and the maids have plenty to do already. So having a nanny would be a great relief. Laura nodded as she took in the explanation. That sounds right up my alley. Good. You're the most promising applicant I've had. I hope this will be a good fit. Thank you. So do I. They, drew, they grew silent again, and Laura's gaze was drawn back to the ocean. This time, however, the horizon looked a bit different. There was a blur taking shape. What's that? she asked. That, he replied, is my home, Scarlet Island. That's the end of chapter one. I'll be doing more videos um, for the rest of the week. So I hope you'll join me. And if you enjoyed this, please share it with your friends. Thank you.